رحمه الله وبركاته ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون وقال تعالى فاذا عزمت فتوكل على الله ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو انكم توكلتم على الله حق حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغدو تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Quran he discusses this word tawakkul comes from the root letters wow kaf and lam wakil comes from there as well to be a guardian Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls himself Al-Wakil. He's the, the guardian of, of all Muslims. And when we talk about this term, Tawakkul or Wakala or Wakil, we translate it as you know, somebody is, is, is just putting their trust in, in Allah. What, is that, what does that actually mean, putting your trust in Allah? What that means is وثوقك بالمضمون واستبدالك الحركة بالسكون What tawakkul really means putting complete reliance and trust in Allah Yes, that's, that's number one is placing that full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is guaranteed and replacing any uneasy feeling that we have within ourselves with sukun, with peace and tranquility that's what tawakkul really is. Is that when you place that full trust in Allah and you replace that uneasy feeling of, of, of constant movement or, or shivering or, or wavering with sukun, peace and tranquility. Now, is tawakkul just you know, saying that I completely rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and not do anything else. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let everything go on its course and, and not going to really try to do anything. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's not what tawakkul means. No. It's not that you just go ahead and walk, you know, talk the talk and not walk the walk. You have to do amal, you have to do actions at the same time. So, we're asked that are we people of action or we people just of lip service there's many people in the world that can just talk i'm mean, going to come across many people whether it's in the corporate world whether it's in you know the medical industry where, wherever you are a lot of people can talk that i'm going to do this i'm going to have these goals i'm going to have all these plans mashallah yes but what are you actually doing with your life no. are you people of action or are you people of lip service so if you say that you rely on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't use any of the asbab, you need to use any of the means that he has given you to obtain that goal, then what you're doing is just lip service. It's not really anything else. You're just talking. So if you think that you're doing tawakkul just by saying, oh, tawakkal to Allah and I'm going to continue doing whatever I need to do, being lazy, not doing anything else about it. No, that's not tawakkul. Now keep in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always ready and waiting to help us to assist us. As long as we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we do our roles as human beings, we do all the actions needed. That's what complete tawakkul is. That you, first off, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance, seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance, 
and then you seek out the asbab, you seek out the means to fulfill that action. It's a two-step process. And as you might, you, everybody knows this hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu, where he said a man came to the Prophet sallallahu that qala rajulun ya rasulullah. He asked, O Messenger of Allah, a'tiluha wa atawakkal, O atliquha wa atawakkal. He said a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked that should I tie my camel and then make tawakkul or should I just let it loose and then make tawakkul? What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, I'qilha wa tawakkal. Tie it. It's common sense, right? Tie it. And then do tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's going to protect it when you're not there. I remember, and you probably have seen this as well when you go to the haram. And you have those individuals selling tasbihs or Qur'ans on, on their little, you know, on their little uh, tables. And salah time comes. And the adhan is called, what do they do? It's, it's literally their entire job and their entire life savings are on that table. That's their job 24-7. That's their life. What do they do? They take a little rumal, just throw it on top and go, go for salah. They can't take it inside the masjid. And they know they need to pray. And they come back and it's right there. No. So that's relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And having that full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of you. As long as you take care of the rights that He has set. No. So we need to use this beautiful intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And Prophet Sallallahu very beautifully said this. Amazing, amazing hadith. He said that لو أنكم توكلتم على الله حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا. That Umar رضي الله عنه he said that the Prophet said that if you were to you, if you were to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa taala with with the you know with the reliance that that He is due that that, that is appropriate for Him, then you would be given provision just like the birds are given provision. When they leave in the morning, they're hungry. Only when they come back home, they're, they're satisfied and full. That if only you had that same tawakkul, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like I provide for them, every single day provides for them. Every single day provides for you. Every single day He will provide for you. But if you're not seeking it out, then why in the world is He going to give it to us? If we're not seeking out that, 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 that complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's why we're going to be in constant, you know, wavering and, and, and shivering and, and stress within our hearts. That unnecessary stress that some of us, we, we go through. That will be removed. <coughs> that's going to be removed if you seek assistance with that being that is everlasting, that was always and that is always going to be. But when we seek reliance upon things that are temporary, like money, like our work, like our friends, like family, then guess what? Money goes, money comes. People go, people come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His words are always here and always will be. For over 1400 years, this karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't changed. So when, when you recite the Qur'an and when you recited it in the month of Ramadan, how did it feel inside your heart? You don't have to ask anybody else, you just between you and Allah. What type of feeling? Did it give, did it give, you know, haraka or did it give a lot of, uh, you know, were you stressed out when you're reading? No, what did it do? It brought sukoon, it brought that sakina. That's what the Qur'an does. You rely upon Allah, guess what? Sukoon and sakina will come into your life as well. Just like for, 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 the, for the bird, when they go out in the morning, they're not stressed out. They know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for them. Go, about, go in the morning, come back full and satisfied. That's the blessing of having this complete tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that hadith is it's, it's discussing the importance of going out and seeking our risk, seeking our sustenance. That's the importance of that hadith. 
And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He witnesses that you're putting 100% of your energy along with 100% of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you'll notice that nothing in your life will, you know, everything in your life will begin to fall into place. One by one, one by one, things will fall into place. Why? Because you're relying upon that being that is Al-Baqi, who al awwal wal akhir that in that being that is the first and he's the last and there was no one before him and there's nobody after him. That's the only way that sukun and sakina will come into our hearts. We seek out the asbab, but number one, we, we pull that full, full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he states, That whoever has tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is sufficient. He's sufficient. I just yesterday, yeah, you want, you know, a lot of people they want stories and examples, right? Just yesterday, let me tell you something from yesterday. I had a patient come, and they said, you know, long story short, you know, they went to the hospital for some procedure, and come to find out some complications happened. And long story short, the doctor told him, you have a 2% chance of living. They told the family, he was, he was unconscious. They told the family, you have a 2% chance of living. So, you know, it's, they were basically kept on telling, telling the wife, telling the kids, you know, just prepare, you know, that they're, they're going to pass away, you know. Do you really even want to do anything? You want to just pull the plug right now? She said, absolutely not. You give me 1% chance, 2% chance, and zero chance. Now, I have complete trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, that, this is what they were telling me yesterday. Complete trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said that they were going to pass away. Three years later, mashallah, he's still alive. Improving. Week by week, improving. Slowly, but improving. And this isn't just a one-off story that I've heard and you have heard probably from your friends and relatives day in and day out, day in and day out when we hear individuals putting that complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Amazing things happen, miracles happen. And it's, the ball is in our court every single day. Right, it really is. Uh, what are we going to do with this life that we've been given? Because it's is very strange, you know, situation that we're in. Uh, for the believer, right, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, "Ajaban li amri mu'min, inna amrahu kullahu khair." He said, "How strange is the affair of the believer? Every single situation he or she is in, there is khair in it for him." Now, if we were going into it with just a you know a dunyawi mindset we would think getting uh, sick that sucks right getting sick that's that's horrible you know uh, losing my job that's terrible a relative of mine passing away that's terrible but what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi tell us inna amrahu kullahu khair every single situation that he has put you in there is khair in it how are you what, what it's your job to find out what is the khair what, what type of khair, what type of goodness did he put in that situation? If you're just constantly, if it's going to be, if the, if the, the goalpost is just your, what you think of it is khair, then obviously you're not going to, you're going to have a miserable life. If whatever you think is good, then there's only certain X amount of things that you think are good. But if you go with the mindset that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated every single situation, every single you know, state that I'm in, as uh, from the time I'm born all the way till the time I pass away, there is khair in it, then that changes the whole mindset. That changes a whole another ball game now. In asaba tu sarra shakara fakana khair Allah. If you're tested with something that is beautiful, something that is makes you happy and you're grateful for it, yeah, then that's mashallah. Fakana khair Allah. That's considered khair, that's considered good. In asaba tu darra sabara fakana khair Allah. And if you're afflicted with something quote-unquote harmful, bad, and you, you bear it patiently, then guess what? That's also, Prophet called it khayr. He also called that good. 
So it's that mindset. What type of Muslim mindset do we have? Now, what do we consider as as good? What do we consider as as bad? So we got to line that up with the Sharia because that's when we say when Muslims say you know Islam is a way of life. Is it really? Is it really, or is that just lip service? When we say it's you know Islam is our way of life. We gotta check ourselves. How much, how Muslim are we in the month of Ramadan versus outside the month of Ramadan? Is Salah still fard outside the month of Ramadan? I think so. No. Is being kind to your, you know, your relatives, being kind to your neighbors, that's that's all still required, right? Outside the month of Ramadan. So we check ourselves. No, nobody else needs to judge us between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And I'll end with when one last narration by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know one day he was he was uh, you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed his human nature right they were riding on, on the same animal right Ibn Abbas was a child he put him on, 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 the, on the animal and he was riding so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him Ya Ghulam that inni u'allimuka kalimat I'm going to teach you something. I want you to memorize it. I want you to pay real close attention to this. The Prophet ﷺ is telling Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, He said, let me give you some advice that be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's going to protect you. He will preserve you. Now, that be mindful of Allah, safeguard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights and He'll be with you. He'll be in your assistance. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And if you, ask, if you ask for help, ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If you ask for assistance, ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because He's the one that's going to provide, nobody else. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعْتَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَوْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ That if the entire ummah gathered to benefit you, to do, try to do good for you, but Allah SWT didn't write it for you, then they're not going to be able to benefit you. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ wanted to cause harm to you. The entire world wanted to beat you. The entire world wanted you to be, you know, disgraced. But Allah SWT did not want that to happen for you. And guess what? That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's what complete tawakkul, complete reliance upon Allah SWT is. That's why we rely upon Allah. People are nice. People are great, mashallah. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's the everlasting being. He is al-baqi. And He is the one that we ask for assistance. And it's through Him that we get anywhere in life. Uh, and we, we witnessed it in the, in the month of, uh, of Ramadan. We witnessed it. Every single one of us witnessed it. The amount of a'mal, the amount of deeds that we did in the month of Ramadan. And the impact it had on ourself. The impact it had on our family. The impact that it had on the community. We know what, 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 what being Muslim can do. That was being Muslim. In Ramadan, we were Muslim. We were acting as Muslim. We were talking as Muslim. Now we were walking like Muslims. And we got to continue that. That was the same amal. We got to continue it. It doesn't have to be the 110 you know, percent, 100, 100 miles per hour every single time. But you got to continue it, right? As Aisha radiallahu anha, she stated, the Prophet ﷺ said, خير الأعمال أدوامها وإن قل That the best of deeds are those that are consistent, even if they're small. Uh, even if they're small. That's on us. That's on us. Whether it's, you know, open the Qur'an every day, a few minutes. Better than, you know, you reading the entire Qur'an multiple times in the month of Ramadan and just touching it from Ramadan to Ramadan. That's going to have that impact, right? Every single day, open it for a few minutes. Between you and Allah, you don't have to show off to anybody, you don't have to tell anybody. You'll see, you yourself will, will witness that sukoon, that, that missing piece. Everybody always talks about, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm having something missing in my life. 
that's the Quran. Right? You can never have, you can never overdose that. Uh, you can never overdose on the Quran. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us full reliance upon Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to put our best effort. And we have both of these conditions in mind. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi Karabalizati, Amma Yasifun. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.